Welcome along to another edition of Beyond the Boundary with myself, Paul Allett. And uh, today I'm delighted to have the greatest left arm quick bowler in the history of the game alongside me. Played for Lancashire for 10 years, has become an adopted Lancastrian and had a wonderful international career with Pakistan. Wazim Akram, welcome along. Welcome, Thank you, Old. Welcome back to em Emirates Old Trafford. Does it still feel a little bit special when you come back to, of course it does. to Manchester? When I was parking my car, so a lot of memories came rushing back. The playing days, obviously the ground has changed a lot for better. But yeah, uh, every time I come here, I, last time I was there about three years ago, when there was a COVID test, we yes, were in yeah. a bubble in the hotel. Yeah. But over and all, uh, playing for Lancashire has been the highlight of my cricketing career. You know, I'm writing my book, it's almost ready, it'll be out in November. Okay. So a lot of uh, positive stuff of Lancashire. For me, playing for Pakistan and coming to Lancashire was like a little oasis. Everything was comfortable, you guys just played cricket. And we had three senior players, Paul Allett, <laughs> Michael Watkinson, and Graham Fowler. <laughs> they used to have make fun of all the junior players. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. It was a tough school at times, I it agree. Was. But uh, it, it's great that you uh, hold Lancashire in such reverence and, and, and uh, such esteem. But tell us a little bit about where, how you came to, to come to Lancashire in the first place, because you were a very raw international cricketer in, in the late 80s and 88. Yeah. You, you hadn't much experience of, of Western culture. None. Uh, I don't think you had much experience of playing over here at all, had you? Not at all. I think in 86, uh, the great Imran sent me to play league cricket up north in Durham. Mm, okay. I played for a, a club called Burnup Field. Yeah. Uh, boundary was about 25 yards right. one side. And uh, it was tough for me, you know, uh, as, as a, a kid from Pakistan coming to this weather and this country. But the idea was 87, we were touring. So just get the idea how the wickets work, mm. how the weather works. So I enjoyed it. We used to end up every night at that nightclub on, <laughs> you know, on the Newcastle River. On, <laughs> on a the ship. Tyne, the River Tyne. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I bet, and the fog on the Tyne was and all then, yours. And then, yes, coming back to your question, uh, 87, I think, or 88, 87, we were playing in Sharjah. Yeah. And Neil Fair brother was playing for England. He got picked up. And Laurie Brown, a physio, great guy, one of the best physios I worked with, great yes. human being too. They got hold of me there. They said, would you like to play for Lancashire? And remember those days, Lancashire, uh, county cricket was, you got to be number one player in the world. Mm. Only one overseas was allowed to play in playing 11 and you can only register two. That's right. So I thought they were talking about Lancashire League. I said, yeah, sure. I'm ready for Lancashire League. They said, no, no, county. I said, really? So yeah, that was my first experience that I found out. And did you, you knew nothing about <coughs> county cricket, presumably? No idea. None. Nothing about it? Nothing about county cricket. I only read about it in Urdu magazines, cricketing Urdu magazines, that's how it works. But uh, when I arrived here, I remember in 1988. Uh, but before that, in 87, there was a test match here at, uh, at Old Trafford. And uh, our chairman, Bob Bennett at the time, he, uh, Lancashire uh, think tank, they got my family here. Yeah. For my birthday surprise, they called everyone, my two brothers, my younger sister, my dad and mom, to, to celebrate my birthday here. I think it was on 4th of June, if I uh, remember correctly. But that was the first experience of me of, uh, you know, Lancastrian hospitality. So the club embraced you right from the word go, and yeah, you in turn embraced the club. It was <coughs> actually David Hughes and Alan Ormrod who were running the cricket department at the time, and yeah. they must have been the two that um, instigated your, your first appearances for Yes, for probably. And I remember uh, uh, they has, uh, both of them, David Hughes, Yosa and Alan, mm. has been a great influence early on as a 20-year-old kid come, coming from a different culture altogether and mixing up with you know, Western culture. And they, help, they really helped me a lot. Remember the first time we met, um, we was a Forte Post House in Nottingham. That hotel on the first floor. Yes. And uh, Alan told me to come to team meeting at six o'clock in the evening, day before the game. I said, okay. He said, it's in the bar. <laughs> okay. I said, that's different. Yeah, <laughs> I come from. A... Yeah. You're not, not, not a drinking culture. You're exactly. <laughs> but again, uh, you guys, the minute I arrived, walked into that uh, wine at, at the bar, you guys all shook hand and said, welcome to Lancashire. So that gave me a bit of confidence. And remember, the next day there was a game against Nottingham. And I was sitting in the corner, right somewhere, because huge seniors, I think, I don't know if it still happens or not, the senior players, they have their certain spots in each dressing room and they go and sit there. Mm. So you as a junior, <laughs> junior, you have to wait 
that everybody is comfortable, then you pick up your spot, if you get a spot. I, I remember wandering into a dressing room and somebody, it probably wasn't you, I'd have, uh, was sitting in where I normally change. I said, listen, yeah. I've been changing I think it was 15 me. years. I think it was yeah, me. Well, <laughs> I, I would let you off. But that's a good culture, though. Yeah, I suppose it, uh, I suppose it, uh, I suppose it is in a way, although it might be a bit outmoded now. Yeah, no, probably. Now then, your, your um, rise and uh, appearance in, in cricket for, was quite extraordinary because you played very little first-class cricket, if any, in Pakistan. None. And you turned up and bowled at the, at the nets. Um, yeah, I, it was a camp of a Pakistan, Pakistan camp. It was a camp for hundred kids, young kids, and I did, uh, you know, well for my club, uh, Ludhiana Jimkhana in Pakistan. So they, uh, you know, said this guy is good. So they go, my name was in that uh, in particular camp, and uh, uh, I remember first four days, mm -hmm. there were hundred kids, and including Ramiz Raja who played a Test cricket oh, by yeah. then, one Test, and Mohsin Kamal, another Test cricket cricketer, and top first class performers were there as well. So nobody gave me the cricket ball to bowl, so I got a bit down, depressed. So I went back to my captain in the club, Sadiq Khan. I said, look, there's no point in me going. I've been standing there for four days. He said, no, no, you go tomorrow. I'll have a word with the camp commander and he'll give you the ball. So the next day, three, four batters to go. He gave me the old ball. I impressed him for some odd reason. Aga Sadat Ali, another late test cricketer. And then the next day, he gave me the new cherry. And you see, I used to bowl big in-swingers then. And I troubled almost every to the right hander. To the right hander. Good ball from a left arm <laughs> quick. Good ball. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I impressed everyone there. And then Javed Miandad was the captain of Pakistan yeah. squad. So he came to practice. So Qadhafi Stadium is a huge ground. Yeah, yeah. So one side was our camp and his net was the other side. So he wanted some bowlers. So the camp commander said, you want to bowl at Javed Miandad? I said, what? Javed Miandad? I had a poster of him in my room. I would love to. Well, one of the best, one of the best Pakistan batsmen ever. Ever, ever. Uh, and one of the best in the world. In the world. So, I went to bowl at him for a couple of days and he got impressed by me. And then New Zealand was touring Pakistan. And suddenly my name came in uh, to play against New Zealand team. Uh, first three-day game. President 11 versus the New Zealand side in Rawalpindi. I was over the wound. So was my family. Okay. Javed Miyadad, Sarfaraz Nawaz, Tahir Nakash, all these tests. Ramiz Raja, Salim Malik. All these guys were in the squad. And Javed dropped, I think, Tahir Nakash or Sir Faraz to have me in playing 11. That was my first first class game. How, how on earth did you feel playing international cricket from straight out of club cricket? How yeah. on earth? Because that would, um, that would, uh, well, it, it would cause issues for, for an awful lot of guys when you were 17, 18? I was 17. 17. Yeah. 18, so how did you feel? I, I think probably too young to I even bother I was too young it. to even bother about Absolutely spot on. Yeah. It was a blessing in disguise. I didn't know probably half the team of New Zealand. I knew Martin Crowe, Jeff Crowe, uh, Jeff Harbour, John Reed, Jeremy Connie, the big names there, you know, yeah, cricketing. Yeah. And they were a good team. At good, the great time. team at the time. Yeah. So I got seven for 50 in first innings. I don't know how. And second inning, two for 50. I was just running in and ball. Well, and I, I know didn't know how. at the reverse swing at the time. But it was just happening. I know how. How? <laughs> because you're a good bowler. <laughs> um, but, uh, I mean, were you, as qu were you quick? And, and presumably you were raw then. As you I was say, raw. I you say I don't know how, but you did swing the ball. You swung the new ball. But, and but you, had this, you, you had this very, yeah, very remember quick that arm. Pindi wicket was like a, like a road. Mm. You know how Pakistani, flat, 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 no, flat no grass, no bounce. But uh, uh, I've got, uh, I think before lunch, I got John Wright caught, caught in second slip. And then from there onwards, just everybody walked in. I would just start bowling full and everybody was getting leg before bowled. So, yeah, I think I was too young and naive. It was a blessing in disguise that I didn't know who the players were. And Yeah, and you didn't have time to worry about it, no. presumably. So, so um, what about your development then? Because... You're set into the world stage straight away. Yeah. Uh, and you've got this natural, raw talent. Were you allowed just to carry on doing that? Or was there some um, pressure on you to, to change what you were doing? Oh, there was no pressure. I had very good mentors in Javed Miyadad yeah. and then Mudassar Nazar, who still oh, yeah. lives in Manchester. He does, yeah. Well travelled person uh, in Mudassar, yeah. yeah, well travelled, who also helped me off the field. And then. 
that was on New Zealand tour. And then Imran was joining us. He was playing for New South Wales. Mm -hmm. So he was joining us. We were then we were meant to tour to uh, go to tour uh, for to Australia for mini World Cup in 1985, mm. where India I think won eventually. India Pakistan went the finals. So I played. I think my first game was against Wendy's or against Australia, and I got five for 21, first top five wickets. Again, just bowling full, not no control of the swing. That I learned eventually. But in the beginning, just come and bowl and hit the right areas, and that's what I did. And Imran was standing at mid-on, you know, telling you know every delivery what to do. So that, as a young kid, was a huge confidence. My hero was telling me what mm. to do, and I, I listened to everything he wanted me to do. And I think that's how I, I sort of got into the groove of Test cricket. Was was Imran a, a good teacher, a good mentor? Did he allow you to develop naturally, yes. or was he was he dictatorial? No, he was, he was very easy. Whatever I comfortable with. But he always, he always wanted me to work hard when I was eight, 17, 18. Mm. You know, those were the tra trades I've learned from him, me, and that Mudassar, that, you know, talent can stay for two, three years, and the hard work can prolong that talent for another, say, 20 years, 15 mm. years. Mm. And I think that's where I have to come back to Lancashire. Uh, when I played in 88, I remember getting my first 100 here, first class 100. And in 89, I became the number one player in the world. Mm. That one six months of county cricket, playing with you guys day in, day out, traveling. And you guys were very helpful. You were helpful as a bowler, a captain. I, yours are. <laughs> I don't know. It's, a very, it's probably the best compliment that anybody's ever paid me to say, for you to say that I help you with your bowling. Um, uh, but I'm flattered. I do remember um, giving you... Uh, a real kick up the backside once when you came off because you said your nose was running and you didn't feel very well. Yeah, Tunbridge I remember. Wells, do you remember? Yes, I remember. Uh, I remember that game as well. Tunbridge uh, Wales. Don't want to play there anymore. <laughs> no, I never liked it there. So I said, come on, this is hard work. Bowling is hard work. Yeah, I remember. So you have to bowl even though you might not be feeling great, you might not be bowling great. So that might have been a lesson. Probably. I think tough love sometimes works. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad you did that. It, it helped me. And you see, the whole team was behind me, the captain, the club. Yeah. I, I remember they would put me in this hotel. Is still there or not? Trafford Hotel? Just oh, the down hotel. the road. Yeah. Down the road. Well, Bob Bennett, used to. the chairman used to stay there, Yeah. So they gave me a no, room No, I don't there. think he's still there now. Nah. But it was all right at the it time. It was okay. So I, w I went, uh, so we went to play away games. Uh, we were away for about two weeks, two and a half weeks. They yeah. came back. They checked out. They checked me out. <laughs> I couldn't find my clothes. I said, where are my clothes? They said, we checked you out. I thought you were not coming back. <laughs> so we had some great stories. But again, when I bought my place uh, here uh, at the time, I remember I must uh, give compliment to this uh, Pakistani uh, uh, Sufi Sadiq. He's still around. Mm. Uh, accountant, he says, I'll help you with your accounts and all. Mm. Uh, I said, I need to, I said, ask Lancashire. He said, you buy a house. I said, buy a house? I'm 20 years old. I have no money. What do you mean buy a house? He said, get a mortgage. I said, what's mortgage? Mm. Then he explained. You have six-year contract. So Lancashire gave me a six-year contract. First time any overseas yeah, yeah. player got such a long contract. Yeah. So that shows the shrewdness of the skipper, Yoza, and of course, Alan, that they realized this guy can actually... Well, those, those were the golden days of, of uh, uh, county cricket being yeah. able to sign overseas players long term because now of course there's so much cricket you, you, you can't can sign it. somebody for two weeks but and you, like, you were available for us virtually all the time except when Pakistan were touring England yeah and because there was no there, there was there was cricket was not all year round mm. it was only Pakistan season from, from September October onwards till March that's right and then county started from April onwards till August September okay so county cricket was uh, essential in your formative years yes it, when because you're such a pioneer and because you are one of the best bowlers there's ever been with the, the, the record, you've got over 900 international wickets across one-day internationals and test matches, 400, over 400 in test matches, over 500 in one-day internationals. Um, it wasn't all about just running in and bowling fast. You pioneered uh, the ability to reverse swing the ball, which is yeah. now, which is now and if you remember, I wouldn't say it's commonplace, but it, 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 it's a fundamental part of the modern game. Yeah, it really is. Now it's called reverse swing. It used to be ball tampering then, mm. if you remember. Well, so they said. <laughs> but you used to throw me the ball when you yeah. were bowling at the other end. I couldn't swing it. Yeah. You used to bowl this out swing, then suddenly the ball is going towards yeah, the next side. Bit, a little bit. And then eventually you got the hang of it. You said, yeah. OK, if it's going in, I'm going to just pitch outside off stump. Yeah. And I remember the first year when there was used to be rain, I used to take Gehan Mendes. 
yes. at Nets. Yes. And you got me, uh, Walter, Paul got me on the side and said, Vaz, listen, I know you're young. <laughs> There's six months to go. <laughs> yeah. So just take it easy. Because you used to roar in, didn't you? In the yeah. Nets. Nobody wanted to face you in the Nets because you were, you were unplayable. But I think nowadays, obviously, mindset has changed. Mm. The more you bowl, you know, a lot of youngsters ask me how should I increase my pace, what to do. It's a very simple answer. The more you bowl, the quicker you'll become because mm. your bowling muscle gets strong. And bowling muscle is not just one particular muscle, it's everything in your body. Mm. And I think nowadays you bowl six, uh, six delivery, eight deliveries and say 12 deliveries and say, okay, I'm done. Okay, thank you very much. Mm. So probably cricket is too much, but mindset has changed over the years, sure. But reverse swing didn't just happen. It, no, you, must have, you, you must have developed this in, uh, in line with, with Wakar probably. And, Wakar came a little and later. Imran, Imran. Imran was Udassar the one. Udassar and Imran. Yeah. They were the one who actually taught me how to reverse swing. And I remember you being um, absolutely paranoid about keeping the ball dry when yeah. we were out there. The rough side. Just keep it dry. Keep it dry. Don't Do spit on it. Don't, yeah. don't put sweat on it. Especially dry. the rough side. Yeah, yeah. And I remember our spinner, very good spinner, Gary Yates. Yes. He used to bowl like this. Yes, he did. And I had to go at him three, four <laughs> times. I said, you better change your habit, buddy. Because the rough side, if it gets soft, then it won't reverse. The rough no. side has to be rough and shiny side has to be shiny. And we had a, 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 at Lancashire, we had a wonderful 10 years when you were oh, 88 to 98. We won all those one day, uh, one day games. And you, you were actually uh, a constant in that team, but there were actually two teams because the old guard, like myself, Graham Fowler, Guillaume Mendes, moved on in about 91, 92. Yes. And then you had... Uh, another crop of lad with the Avertons and the Fair, well, Fair Brother was there as well. As well. Um, Crawley. Peter Marin uh, came uh, in. Peter, Peter Martin Peter came Martin, in. Chappie came in a little later. Then Bumble, Junior mm. Bumble. Ian Austin, the great mm. man. Yeah. Uh, what, a, what a performer he had been for Lancashire in shorter format. Who was who was the, the, the guys that stuck out most for you in, in Lancashire? Who were, the, who, were think, the, who were the guys that you really. Um, I'm still admired or got on with or whatever. I mean, you guys were seniors. I had always admired you as a, as a senior player. But of course, Harvey Neil Fairbrother is a very good friend of mine. Still, we are in touch. Ian Austin was where I was very close to. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe he's got a bar now in uh, wherever he's I living. Th beautiful I think wine he, bar. I think he, yes, he has. Yeah, and he's a granddad. He's, he is, and he yeah. sells beer as well. Oh, on top brilliant. Of that, which he was always destined to <laughs> do. Destined to do, absolutely. <laughs> no, but all the, everyone, I mean, it's difficult to name any, but everyone was so helpful. Yeah. And it was fun for me to coming to Lancashire. It was like coming back home, no, no political thing, no politics in cricket. You come, you play, you go home, you have a good laugh, and the next day you start again. You said earlier on, um, right at the start of this, that this was your happiest time. Yeah. When you were here, when you were playing here, you probably felt the pressure was off a little bit and you enjoyed uh, playing in county cricket. But we, surely winning the World Cup in 92 must have been the pinnacle. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think for every sport, sportsman is basically ideas to represent your, uh, you know, your, your country's team in a World Cup and then winning it. And then of course being man of the match. And that too against the mighty England side at the mm. time. They were the most experienced team in the world mm. uh, as far as one day cricket concerned. But yeah, that was uh, one of the best moments. In fact, the best moment of my life. What did it feel like um, because there was this aura about you, I remember standing next to Warren Hegg at Slip. Uh, Warren was yeah, Warren I forgot was took keeping, his name. Yeah, yeah, Warren keeping wicket to you, and he must have been he must have been one of the best keepers you ever bowled. Absolutely, I don't think I can't remember him dropping a catch off. You. No, and very you bowled, rare. You bowled ninety miles an hour and, and swung it and hooped it round. He was corners. one of the best keepers I think who kept uh, mm. uh, uh, on my bowling. He was phenomenal and a great and, and, and a great guy as well off yeah, the field. Yeah, Still, is very he helpful, is. very easygoing, hard worker. But getting back to you, you had this aura about you, and I I know standing at slit twenty yards back, yeah. watching you run in, there was a there was a fear and a trepidation in the batsmen facing you because they didn't know whether that you were going to hit them on the toe or on the nose. On the nose. I think that's what I've learned in country cricket. That's why the experience matters. Playing in under different condition matters. And, and every ground is different in England. Mm. The weather is always nice. Mm. It's not, I mean, if it's 20, 26 degrees in England, you say it's a heat wave. No, it's not. Yeah. Heat wave is in Pakistan right now. It's 41 40, degrees. 40. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that that also helped. And remember, we used to have a, a, a playing deck as well. And the next deck, uh, next was pitch, each side used to be dry as well without the grass. 
that boys can throw one bounce as well yeah. because the reverse swing. So that helped a lot as well. I think yeah. every, if I mean even in my book is coming out in November, the Lancashire stories are quite funny and and uh, memorable and happy times. Brian Lara, Ricky Ponting, um, and Viv Richards have all gone on record to say that you were the the best bowler they ever faced. Wow. That's pretty serious. That's, a, that, that, that's huge, coming from the greats of the game. Yeah. And I think uh, it was because of my quick arm action, maybe. And you my were very difficult to pick up. Yeah. You had this scampering run. And I learned, quick run. And I learned things as well. I was the only left-hander who went around the wicket, if you remember. Well, you started this. Yeah, I started this trend. You did. And I used to run, uh, I used to run behind from behind the umpire. The umpire. Mm. I said, why not? And nowadays, leap out. Uh, yeah, nowadays I see bowlers, even T20 format, they're getting hammered every ball. They don't change anything. No. So as a bowler, what's my job is to create a doubt in batsman's mind. Mm. If things are not going well, just have your run of diagonal. Di di diagonal. Mm. Just ball the same delivery you want. Want to mm. do something different, but you were capable of bowling round the wicket and swinging the ball <coughs> away from the right hand. Yeah. Very difficult thing to do with a left, as a left arm bowler. I think uh, uh, both of these guys. Much. Yeah, I mean nowadays uh, uh, Shaheen Afridi. Yes, and then Mitchell Stark, yes. Trent Bolt. Yes, yes. These but guys were the are pioneer. Very good. Yeah, I started bowling around the wicket, different angle altogether. And as a right-handed batsman, you, if I'm bowling around the wicket, if you're batting. You have to, with the angle, you think ball's going to come in. Yeah. And if it just strays, goes across a bit, every time, every chance to take an edge. Uh, whilst we could talk for hours, um, and, and hopefully you'll come back and we'll do part two of this sure. at some point. But sure. just before we go, I talked about the batters who said you were the best. Who was the hardest batsman to bowl at? You see, York? I played against uh, uh, great Viv Richards, Brian Lara, Sachin Tandulkar, Alan Border, Graham Gooch, Mike Getting, Alex Stewart. These are the big names. But I think... One of the best was who played against uh, me and Vakar against reverse swing was Martin Crow. Uh, he always played us on a front foot. At 93 series, he got 200 out of three test matches. Pakistan won 3 0. I got 16 wickets in two games. I got injured. Vakar got 30 wickets in three test matches. And uh, he got 200. And then I think in England, uh, who really played both of us well with the new ball was Alex Stewart. Mm. Because he realized I have to attack, mm. I can't just block and wait for the semi new ball. By the time it'll be too old, too late. So yeah, he was also quite difficult, especially. And in one day cricket, I suppose uh, uh, Brian Lara and all these guys were there, but Gilchrist was the most difficult, especially when there were no bounces. Mm. Was it's been fantastic to talk to you, um, and I hope that you'll you'll come back and talk to us again. You're going to keep coming back to, to Emirates Old Trafford and absolutely Manchester? any time. I mean, I'm uh, 20 minutes away every summer. I'm here for a month and a half with my family. My boys are 23 and 21, 24 and 21. They were born here in Vidinshaw Hospital. Mm -hmm. So they love coming here. They have a lot of memories of their mother as well. So yeah, love coming back, enjoying the weather, enjoying my little town, little Altrincham town. Just walk around, done a messy. Just love it. Beautiful. Well, we love having you back. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you for everything that you've done for Lancashire and keep coming back. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Thank you.